um, it's wonderful to be here. A nice audience, people in the country here is nice. Wonderful landscape, the ocean, the sunshine, glass of wine, good food, and talking about waste management is the best that the Swede can have. <laughs> We were talking today about <clears throat> education, public awareness and so on. I had the opportunity 30 years ago to start a division in waste management and recovery at Lund University. It was a privilege for me. It was very important, I think, for the waste management <clears throat> business and uh, for those that are working in the area. But nobody believed that it could be any science in waste management. I had to compete with computer science and so on. But <clears throat> after 30 years, I'm very satisfied what we have reached. Almost all universities all over the world have a group or some researchers in the area of waste management, and that's very fine. And uh, when I started, we also initiated this with source separation in Sweden. And at that time, nobody believed on that. You can sort yourself, William, they said. And uh, I'm also happy to see that we are source separation or make separation all over the world today. We try, we are on different levels and we learn a lot. But to reach that during 30 years is very important. And today I will also talk about landfill mining. That's also a subject that nobody believe on at the moment, that there's economy in it and so on. But I will go on. <clears throat> Even though I'm a little bit optimistic, why is the, the uh, waste levels rising in the world? Yeah, you can explain it. Uh, <clears throat> The world society is growing welfare, and we create more and more waste. More people move into the cities, have modern uh, behavior, new, new technology they use, and so on. And that generates a lot of new uh, waste, and we have had difficulties to change the, the lifestyle, we believe we could change the lifestyle to uh, a more sustainable, but we have difficulties with that and we have fighting that for 30 years also. <clears throat> yeah, the waste management vision today is zero waste. We are far away from that today, but it's a good goal to have that. And in Sweden, we have the goal to reach very close to that in 2020. And we try to decouple amount of waste growth to <clears throat> growth rates. But you see, in the world, when uh, the, the, the economic developing uh, development increase in the world, you produce more and more waste, and it's uh, totally in the opposite direction. <clears throat> but we also want to move upwards in the UP uh, European Union waste hierarchy. <clears throat> and uh, here you can see how we want to uh, change the curve that the amount of waste created followed the GTP. <clears throat> Here you can see how the Swedish waste management is carried out today. We have a lot of uh, recycling, electronics, metal scrape, recycled paper, packaging and so on. And then we have 
material recovery and energy recovery. We have biological recovery with anaerobic digestion and composting. We can also see that we have a decrease in landfilling and it's very little today. And uh, generated waste is uh, much less today. <clears throat> the European Union Council Directive that came 99 was very important. It changed the, the waste management a lot from landfilling more to incineration and other methods. At that time, the 14 of the European countries reported about 9,000 active landfills. Uh, but we changed then for more separation and we needed a lot of more storage and, of waste and recyclables. That gave some problems with the <coughs> fires and other storage problems. So this was the situation. We have about 4,000 to 6,000 landfills in Sweden and 75,000 to 100 old landfills in the Baltic Sea region. And in the uh, European Union, we consider it must be something between 150 and 500,000. And I must say that the, its resources uh, hidden there. So we have uh, thrown the bullet on the landfills and we need to recover it. And uh, it has been a change afterwards. For instance, Estonia had 370 uh, landfills before the directive. Today they have five sanitary landfills and the same uh, is in the other countries. And uh, incinerate, uh, incineration increased. We had 21 incinerators in Sweden when the directive came. And I could have promised my head that it shouldn't be any more incinerators in Sweden after the debate in, uh, during the 90s. But this changed in 2012, we had 31 incinerators and today we have 32, uh, 34 incinerators. And what uh, happens? Yeah, we don't have uh, f uh, fuel enough, we don't have waste enough. We have to import, for instance, from UK, from Norway and other countries. And the same happened in US during the 70s. They had also problem with uh, getting enough with fuel. And that was the reason that you started with landfill mining in, uh, in uh, US. Landfilling, we have learned, give a lot of problems. And here you can see an image from <coughs> 2016, from India. We have a lot of landfills all over the world with a lot of resources, but it gives also environmental problems, as fires as this, but also methane to the atmosphere. <coughs> And a lot of people are born on landfills and live the whole life on landfills. And you have accidents here. Here is one example, 50 persons killed. You don't think about it, but there are a lot of people, poor people, living on the waste. We have learned that we shall cover the landfills today according to the European Union standard and we shall reduce the methane. I don't know how you have solved it here in your country uh, because you don't have so much soil and so on. Uh, and uh, I will give an example how we did in, on an island where we have a lack of cover material. But here is a biocover system that reduce the emission of methane. <clears throat> And the waste generation increases more and more, and we have about 17 billion tons today, up to 27 billions that we expect 
2050. And we have learned how to sort and so on, but uh, we don't think about the fine fractions. It has a lot of valuable metals, zinc, copper, nickel, and chromium in the fine fractions. So we must be better to take out these uh, <coughs> metals and also these rare, rare uh, earth metals. And I mean, if we can't produce these, how shall we survive during a dinner or during a conference if we don't can make the, these uh, uh, telephones and so on? So we need these metals. And uh, this is a part of the circular economy. It's very important that we talk about circular economy, also about these fine fractions. It's easy to understand these fractions that you can see with your eyes, plastic, wood, and that we are talking about here. But we must remember the fine fraction. In the, even in the daily ways, you have fine fraction that contains a lot of uh, metals that shall be recycled and put into new products. This use and waste area is over. We must recycle in the circle economy. We are talking about the zero waste and there is a philosophy that, <coughs> that we shall redesign for re <coughs> reuse and for uh, recovery and so little as possible shall go to landfills and incinerators. And we are just in the beginning of this process and more, more uh, producer responsibility will give that as a result. And <coughs> we must guide the people, awareness and so on, to help us to uh, make this material recovery. We, we can't pay professional to take up uh, litter from uneducated people. We, uh, the whole society must have a high level of, uh, <clears throat> of knowledge in waste management. And I, as a professor at the university, have been teaching on all levels down to uh, the, <coughs> the daycare center. So we must have knowledge on each level. <clears throat> I talk about the zero waste concept that is that we shall take care of and recycle, recycle the daily waste. No waste shall be generated. And I hope 50 years from now the word waste shall not exist in the dictionary. And I will expand this expression. And talk about beyond the zero waste concept. You know there are a lot of metals in sludge, ashes, and even in harbor sediment. In some harbors you have, have, a, have a six, seven meter of sediment, and some of them can have high content of copper. I have an example. Uh, in Oskarshamn in Sweden, where the concentration in the sediment near to a copper factory is higher than any mine in the whole world. And a matter of fact, we're talking about urban mining. I see the whole city as, as a garbage da a damp. But the thing is that we don't know what's inside. Just in the he house here, what do we have? How much beton? How much aluminium? How much plastic? But if I go to the ash cell at the landfill, I know exactly how much copper, zinc, and so on. So how can we have this uh, urban dump? We must have better control. I'm talking about glass mining. We have in my, my town area about 40 
glass damps from glass factories, and that gives a lot of metals, arsenic, cadmium, lead, and so on, to the groundwater. <clears throat> and people are dying in cancer there. We want to take away those and <coughs> landfills and recover the mat material, the glass separately and the, the metals. And uh, <coughs> that all materials shall go in to the anthropogenic circuits. So I'm talking about the zero waste concept. It means that all these material we have been spilling since the, the environment, or since the uh, <coughs> industrial revolution started, we shall return to the circuits, anthropogenic loops. That's very more, uh, important. In the waste management, the most important thing is to separate out the toxic substances. You shall never mix the toxic substances with other recovery material. This is important. So we are going for more landfill mining, glass mining, harbor mining, and so on. So we are talking about <coughs> the circular economy from the raw material process, the design, and so on, it shall not be any spill. We must be careful and study at each step. But we have also this residual waste fraction. And I want to reduce that residual fa uh, fraction to zero. We are well uh, <clears throat> aware of the waste hierarchy, but I want to introduce a new uh, <clears throat> uh, concept, is the bank account storage cell concept. What do I mean by that? Yes, this uh, fraction with metals, fine fractions and so on, they shall not be wasted. They shall be sorted already from the uh, beginning. When we make remediation, we make safe landfill cells here, lined and covered. And then when we find the methods to take out the copper, zinc, lead, and so on in an economic way, then we shall have it. We have already some such cells in Sweden, but I hope we will see that for the future. And uh, this is land, all landfills are reservoirs that we can recover. For instance, uh, the landfills in Sweden, I show, showed you that we have four to 6,000 uh, old landfills. If we should recover the energy from these landfills, yes, that it should give us district heating for the whole Sweden for 10 years, yes, we can take. Do we afford to waste this? And uh, <clears throat> I saw also here that you were in your, um, your island here, you have about 19 not finished landfills. Have you thought about landfill mining to protect your groundwater and so on? When you take it away, you are rid of it forever, and you recover the resources. So think about that. <clears throat> I started landfill mining already in 1994. I was alone, I think, almost in Europe at that time. <clears throat> but uh, today, a lot of research group are working with it. What uh, can you expect to find? in a landfill. Yes, you, if you have statistic, you can see what inside. You can see here, for instance, paper. We have a peak in 1960. Why did we have a peak in 1960s? Yes, Sweden developed very much economic, and paper was a sign that you are a rich 
country. After that, scout organization and others started to re <coughs> recycle and recover the paper, and today we have a stable situation. The same was with the garden waste. An uh, industry worker could have a villa, and uh, uh, then you have fruit trees and so on. We have the plastics and so on. Is it any economics in landfill mining? Yeah, it depends on a lot of uh, things if we shall do it today. But if you have certain situation for metal in the landfill, you just taking out the metals can finance it. But maybe the landfill is interesting for a shopping center or for <coughs> industry area and so on. And also you perhaps want to protect a water resource for instance, and so on. So you have to count on it to get it uh, economic today. Yeah, we have critical metals within European Union. I mentioned before, and we have list of those that we have a shortage of, and we must be careful. Of these rare earth metals, China have 80% or more of this, so we must be careful, so we don't need to spend a lot of our money to, to, for, for this. To make this landfill mining economic, we must do it in an effective way. So here we have developed a train, as I call it, with different uh, machines in order to recover it in a proper way. You have different facility, you know the use of these windscreens and so on are used for daily uh, <coughs> sorting already, but you must accommodate them to the landfill mining concept. Here you have big uh, stones and beton and tires and so on, you must recover them in a special way. Metals. You have a lot, you separate with the machines, you get out the fine fraction in, in, um, in lots of small heaps from the machines, but even if you have magnets, you lose a lot. So even if you take the, this magnet over the, these separated heaps, you get a lot of more metal. So it's inside uh, this. And uh, we almost, uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, terminated a landfill in the same way as you do on all your island here. And it was an island with very thin soil la layer, 15 centimeter or, or, or something like that. If you shall then uh, finish that landfill in such a way as according to the European Union concept, you will scrape the soil from the whole island in order to have enough soil. So we did another thing. We took just the top of the landfill, 14 meters on the top, and separated out the fine fraction there and used that as cover material and also as a methane for methane reduction. We also use the plastic in the landfill. Yes, I said that technology is very important, how you use the machines. Yes, to put in the, the 40 millimeter trammel screen and the 10 millimeter trammel screen, we get this wonderful fuel with 15 to 17 mega per kilogram, and that was very popular for the cement industry as a fuel. And that we have thrown away on the landfill and not used. We put, took also oil out of it, oil uh, from the plastic. And then we made a beautiful park. You mentioned here that you also made a beautiful park. And we used the plastic there. 
to make planks of and use it for escalators, for dustbins and picnic areas and bridges and so on. And uh, it's wonderful for the people in the city. You can make sports in it, skiing and such things. And now we had an international PhD conference there with 29 students from 15 countries to study this. It's wonderful to show many countries can meet and students meet like this. And here you see the difference. Here it was before like this, a new, a beautiful park. How do you sample in a scientific way in a, such a landfill, in such a <coughs> inhomogeneous material? And we take a bucket of the excavator. It's one cubic meter and take almost one meter dip, depth. And then we put everything in the, in the trauma screen and separate it in the machine and go into details. Here you can see the machinery in different fractions we sort together with the students. You can read about these studies in our papers. And then you get a very detailed diagram what's inside. And you see here we go into the detail also on the reject. How much is the material in the reject? Uh, the value of that and you have other fractions uh, that are mean, um, less than 40 millimeter. We go into detail there also. And <clears throat> we have in, in the, the fine fraction, we have almost the whole periodi uh, periodical chemical system and we have these rare elements there and so on. And we must learn how to take them out in an economic way. <coughs> so the students standing there in 10 days, in minus 10 degrees, sorting by, <coughs> by hand, and they coming to me and say, thank you, William, we were allowed to come with you. And now we know what waste management is and I have something to tell during the lectures. And here you can see how the fine fraction uh, contain compared to coarse fraction of fly ash and bottom ash. And it's as important as the bottom ash and fly ash. And we must recover these materials. And uh, yeah, here you also have a set of uh, uh, metals that we found in this landfill. And we have been at uh, other places in Stockholm, as the biggest uh, waste management company, uh, Rangsells in Stockholm. They have now paid a PhD student for me to go into these fine fractions and look for the meta metals and how to recover uh, them. And you see here <coughs> that 40%, uh, <coughs> no, uh, almost 80% are less than 40 millimeter. And this fraction, less than 10 millimeter, is interesting because most of the metals are down to particles less than two millimeter. And how do we find out technical new solutions, how to separate out these fractions? So in the separation technology, the machines, we must develop better tools. So you saw that just when I took 40 and 10 millimeter trammel, I got a wonderful fuel. How can we do that with the metals, for instance? And also in the mining of waterwork sludge, we put a lot of aluminium sulfate and iron chloride into the water to make good drinking water. And then we get a sludge containing 
aluminium and iron. Now we are working to take out that. And you see here in the profile, here the bottom profile is the iron, is the brown one, and the top is the, the aluminium. And in just one cell there, it was about eight, uh, eight million euros in cash, or in, not in cash, uh, the value of the, 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 the aluminium was that. But uh, you must find a way how to take it out in an economic way. And uh, here you can see also harbor mining. Here you see when the boats coming in, sediments and so on. Uh, coming up, and here you can see the value here of uh, the material there, but it's as it is on the bottom, and glass mining, and urban mining, and some conclusions there. I think I have said everything about that. So we have international cooperation about that, and I want to invite you to come to Kalma to 20 years uh, a celebration of the conference Linnaeus Ecotech. Every second year I have uh, an international conference and uh, <clears throat> this is, I don't say, uh, put my nose so high as to say that this conference is the most scientific one. No, it's not. It's a meeting point between the industry and the academy and the society and so on. This is a meeting point. We work with the, the <coughs> quadruple helix concept in my uh, research group. So you are most welcome to, to, <coughs> to calm my November, but remember it's not this sunshine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>